everybody, it's Jesse from Strike Force Sports. Today we're going to take a look at the Echo One GAT, or General Assault Tool. Um, we had the first chance to take a look at this gun at Echo One East Rush last year, um, which was an event where Echo One flew out to Strike Force. We had an awesome day with them. Um, and they've made some really cool improvements and changes to the design of the gun uh, before its full release uh, that I want to go over. Um, so the gun is really cool. It's a very compact, CQB-ready machine pistol. Um, is the best way to describe it because it's very easy to handle with one one hand. Um, the gun itself has a steel upper receiver, polymer lower receiver. Uh, the gun is firing about 340 FPS when we checked it. Um, when the spring settles in, it'll probably get closer to about 335, but that's really great. That's at the limits for most indoor fields. Um, it has an outstanding trigger response. It is designed for lipos. So the LiPo is housed in the grip. I'm using an 11.1 11, 11 volt, uh, 1000 milliamp LiPo. Um, and it doesn't over rotate at all, which is really nice. Uh, that shows that the gun is, um, it's designed to be used with LiPos. A lot of guns will say that they're LiPo ready, but it'll double or triple shoot um, when you pull the trigger. That has not happened at all, and this is a fully charged battery. So I think that Echo One really did a great job with that. The gun itself comes with two 250 round high cap magazines, a battery, a charger, uh, and the gun itself. Cool thing about these magazines, I'm guessing that Echo One will come out with some mid caps, but with two 250 round metal mid -ca uh, high caps in the box, you're definitely gonna be set up with all the firepower you need for pretty much any CQB game. Uh, 500 rounds is definitely gonna last you 10 or 15 minutes. If it doesn't, you're shooting too much, um, which you might end up doing with the GAT because it's a lot of fun. It does come with um, sling points on the front and back, so if you aren't like dual wielding them, you can pretty easily do that with a sling over your back or your shoulders. Um, it has the mock bolt, which uh, opens up and exposes the hop-up unit, which is very easy to adjust. You can do that on one thing that they did, two things that they changed from the initial prototype that we saw to now, uh, is the addition of this vertical grip, which does house the battery, which is a huge improvement in my mind. Um, there is a rail under here, so you can add your own grip and store the battery how you like if you want to maybe wire it to the rear. I know that Brian did a short video on how to modify the gun to wire it to the rear. Um, but this really does keep your battery uh, inside the gun compact. Um, there's no exposed wires at all, which is nice for a front wired gun. And it is comfortable. It's not a flimsy, you know, dumb grip. It actually is very comfortable for the gun. Um, the other thing that they added, which was huge in my mind, was the addition of semi-auto. Initially, the model that we saw was safe and full auto, and that makes sense for the kind of gun it is, but it doesn't make sense for CQB because most fields uh, require semi-automatic. Um, but with the addition of that on this gun, um, that's really, really huge, I think, for making this gun a more practical uh, tool for airsoft. The Echo One GAT has safe, auto, and semi-automatic. In order to access this, it's kind of the reverse of a standard M4 selector, where where you're pointing is actually the indicator rather than the opposite. So this is semi-auto, semi full auto, and safe. The Echo One Gap comes with a red tip, but it is not on a threaded outer barrel. The inner barrel on the gun is 165 millimeters long and is a 6.06 .06 millimeter diameter inner barrel. Pre-installed in every gun is also a Mad Bull bucking to increase accuracy and durability. The magazine is taken out of the gun by hitting this oversized magazine relief just in front of the trigger guard. The magazine is a high capacity 250 round metal mag where the access is in the back of the magazine and the feeding is up top. The battery is accessed in the front grip by removing this nut and opening up the grip itself. It's nice and tight so it's not going to slip at all. What you'll find is that the battery is attached inside the grip. This is a standard 11.1 volt, 1000 milliamp battery with a small rail segment. If you decided to put a grip on this as well, that's possible, but it is nice that this feature was included with the gun right out of the box. All right guys, I'm about back with the Echo One Get. It's a little bit windy today, so I'm not gonna be judging too much of my accuracy of the conditions right now, but I do wanna test the range of the gun. Um, we're at about 40 feet right now, which is really sufficient for indoor airsoft. Um, we're just gonna be shooting at the kind of white things down there. I'm also shooting off hand, so uh, wish me luck. It's a lot of fun. 
All right guys, so shooting the GAT, we were using 0.25 gram bio BBs for shooting outdoors, always do that. Um, we had the hop almost entirely off, and that was just kind of to see you know, how much the hop would affect it. Plus at this range, we really didn't need too much. Um, the groupings were actually very impressive. If there was someone standing there, hands down, it would be an easy shot. Um, the rate of fire is outstanding. The accuracy really out of the box is on point for the kind of gun it is. Um, there's really not too much else. I mean, for its price point and the kind of gun that it is, uh, it really serves its purpose well. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to shoot too. The Echo One GAT is available at Strike Force Sports for $160. If you're not in the area, we can ship or support your local airsoft store and buy it there.